Texas State may be one of the best stories this season when it comes to college football. A program that has been at the bottom of college football for nearly a decade not only upset a Power 5 team this year, but also just became bowl eligible and have the chance to win 10 games. What is even crazier is they are doing this with a roster that had been gutted and with a first-year head coach. This is the story of college football's best story this year. This is the rise of Texas State football. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I am planning to release multiple videos a week this season. Also, let me know what your favorite story has been this year in college football in the comments section below. Texas State began playing football in 1904 under the name Southwest Texas State Normal School and originally played in the TIAA until its demise in 1932. They then joined the Lone Star Conference, which was playing under the NAIA at the time. They won the conference in 1948, 1954, 1955, 1963, and 1971 before the conference moved to the Division II level. Under head coach Jim Wacker, Texas State won back-to-back -back Division II national titles in 1981 and 82. John O'Hara took over as head coach in 1983 and led them to another conference title that year. He also made the push for the school to jump to the Division I AA level. The Bobcats found some success under head coach Dennis Franconi, but he would leave after two seasons. In 1997, Bob DeBess led the Bobcats to their school's best record in a decade when they went 7-4 and earned a top 25 ranking in 2000. But they would not make the Division I AA playoffs until 2005 when they won their first conference title since 1983, winning the Southland Conference with an 11-3 record. They made it to the semifinals of the playoffs before falling to Northern Iowa 40-37 and would not return again until 2008, losing to Montana in the first round. Franconi would return as head coach in 2011 and help them transition to the FBS level in 2012 in the WAC Conference and in 2013, they moved to the Sun Belt. He would retire after the 2015 season and the Bobcats turned to Everett Withers, who was the head coach of James Madison at the time. After a 7-28 record, Withers was fired during the 2018 season and once again Texas State was looking for a new head coach. Jake Spavidal was a young offensive coordinator from West Virginia. He was viewed by many as the next big thing after play calling the Mountaineers to a top 10 offense and helping Johnny Manziel find a lot of success while he was an assistant at Texas A&M. After Spavidal took the Texas State job, Cliff Kingsbury considered hiring him as the Arizona Cardinals offensive coordinator but he decided to stay in San Marcos. Texas State lacked the facilities many would expect from a school in Texas. The Bobcats regularly traveled to San Marcos High School to use their indoor facilities because Texas State didn't have one, and Spavidal said the program had 10 racks in the weight room, while Lake Travis High School had 48. This will all change in 2024 when they open their new weight room. I also remember there being some type of crazy funding issue a few years back, but that did not help the Bobcats find success. Texas State struggled under Spavidal, who never won more than four games in a season and decided to ignore high school recruiting, choosing to go all in in the transfer portal and Juco players his last two years. He finished his four seasons with a 13-35 record. Rumored names for his replacement were Eric Morris, G.J. Kinney, Phil Longo, and David Bailiff who all had some sort of Texas roots. Enter G.J. Kinney. Kinney was born on December 2nd, 1988, and grew up in Mesquite, Texas, which is about four hours north of Texas State and just outside Dallas. Kinney's father was a high school coach and was almost killed by a disgruntled parent of one of the players he coached when they shot him in the chest a few years back. He survived the shooting and watched his son lead Canton High School to its best season in school history with a 12-2 record as they made the state championship. When his father accepted a job at Baylor, Kinney transferred to Gilmer High School for his senior year to live with his mother and stepfather. He led the Buckeyes to a 10-0 record but lost in the first round of the playoffs. He would go on to play at both Texas and Tulsa where under Gus Malzahn, he threw for 9,472 yards and 81 touchdowns. He went undrafted during the 2012 NFL Draft and spent time with the New York Jets, Omaha Nighthawks, San Antonio Talons, Philadelphia Eagles, New York Giants, Calgary Stampeders, and Saskatchewan Rough Riders. 
In 2017, he joined SMU as a graduate assistant, and then Arkansas in 2018, serving as an offensive analyst. And then the Philadelphia Eagles in 2019 as the offensive special projects position, which he helped GM Howie Roseman scout players. In 2020, he joined the Hawaii coaching staff as their offensive coordinator and quarterback coach. He then went to UCF to serve as their co-offensive coordinator and quarterback coach in 2021 under his previous head coach at Tulsa. At the end of the year, he was named the new head football coach at Incarnate Word, and during his lone season as head coach, he led the Cardinals to a 12-2 record, the Southland Conference title, and led them to the semifinals of the FCS playoffs, where they lost to North Dakota State. He was named the head coach of Texas State on December 7th, 2022. He arrived with high expectations, wanting to go to a bowl game and win conference championships. He even mentioned how he wanted to make the college football playoffs down the road. This seemed crazy to many as they had only had one winning season the past 10 years. But his philosophy had worked at Incarnate Word as they made it to the quarterfinals for the first time in school history and had the most prolific offense in college. Unlike previous head coach Jake Spavadol, Kinney's vision for the Texas State program included a big focus on recruiting Texas high school players. He closed out his opening press conference saying, I believe in this place. I believe in the leadership. I always knew if the right guy got this job, you better watch out. Kinney wasted no time putting together a roster that could compete their first season. Behind Colorado, Texas State had the second most dramatic transfer portal overhaul. They took 39 players from the transfer portal and 14 from the high school ranks to make up their 53 scholarship newcomers over half of the 85 scholarship limit. Kinney flew from Fargo to his new job in San Marcos to begin assembling a roster. He didn't have much time, and he didn't have many players either, as the early signing period neared at the end of December. Kinney spoke on the crazy time span saying, I just wanted this job so bad. I wasn't doing a deep dive of the roster to be honest with you. You know, I'm very confident in my ability to coach, and then, hey, you know, basically, we'll figure it out from there. He watched as 23 players transferred out when he first arrived. Kinney felt he needed to be right by the players he inherited from the previous coaching staff, and that included the players transferring out. He was not going to block players from playing immediately at other schools. Defensive back the Jordan Mask went on to play for Kinney's old coach, Gus Malzahn, at UCF. Defensive lineman Devon Sears went to play at Oklahoma. Cornerback Jaron Morris went on to FAU. Guard Kyle Hergel went to Boston College. Offensive lineman Dalton Cooper went to Oklahoma State, where he started in Week 2. So while he saw important players transfer out, there was also no foundation, as Spavadol, like I mentioned before, had ignored high school recruiting in 2021, not signing a single high school player. While Colorado had the largest roster overhaul, that was by choice. Texas State needed to bring in players out of necessity. Kinney focused on players with Texas ties, both at the high school level and college level. He told Sports Illustrated, I think there's something to be said about signing the high school kids and developing him from Texas. It just matters. Some kid from New Jersey or some kid from Michigan, it's just different. Texas State is not going to mean as much as it will to a kid from Austin or San Antonio. He brought four of his five starting offense alignment from Incarnate Word, with the fifth starter being originally from Oklahoma. Receiver Drew Donnelly and tight end Connor Fox are from Texas originally. Wide out Cole Wilson came from Incarnate Word and running back Ishmael Mahadi played in state at FCS at Houston Christian. But Kenny knew he was missing the most important piece of the puzzle, his starting quarterback, the same position he played in college at the pros. Enter TJ Finley. TJ Finley was a former three-star recruit, according to 24-7 Sports Composite, from the state of Louisiana back in the class of 2020. He originally committed to LSU out of high school and actually made his first career start as a freshman when starter Miles Brennan went down with an injury. In his first start at LSU, Finley went 17 for 21 for 265 yards and two touchdowns to one interception, while also adding a rushing touchdown on the ground. He finished the season starting five games, throwing for 941 yards, five touchdowns, and five interceptions. After competing with quarterback Miles Brennan and Max Johnson in spring practice, Finley announced he would be entering the transfer portal. He would choose to transfer to Auburn over the likes of Alabama, Penn State, and Houston. On September 25, 2021, Finley would come in the fourth quarter for the benched Bo Knicks and threw the game-winning touchdown versus Georgia State. He finished the season throwing for 827 yards, six touchdowns and one interception, and almost led Auburn to an improbable win over Alabama in the Iron Bowl in overtime. 
He started the 2022 season as a starter, but struggled throwing for 431 yards, one touchdown, and four interceptions, and after the season, he announced he was going to be transferring again. When he entered the transfer portal, he had a lot of attention from other Power 5 schools and was not even considering Texas State, until he got a call from GJ. Kinney's cold call to Finley is actually pretty funny. He told Sports Illustrated, I was out in New Braunfels, kind of a date night and you know i had some liquid courage i had finley's number and called him and just gave it to him straight i think he got kind of fired up after the call to be honest with you he had a couple other power five visits lined up and i was able to say i want you to come to us first when can you get here this was sunday he said i can be there on wednesday so we got him here on wednesday and i knew that was gonna be the key to getting him i pretty much kind of told him like i see where things went wrong at lsu I could see where things went wrong at Auburn. You know, both of the guys that really recruited you left. So you're with a new guy that didn't recruit you, and that can happen sometimes. So I think he appreciated the honesty. I think he appreciated the research that I did. Finley took the visit to Texas State with plans to take other visits as well, but instead would commit that day, meaning Kinney had his quarterback. Heading into the 2023 season, Bill Steele projected Texas State to finish last in the Sun Belt, but also mentioned how they were going to be a tough team to predict. They opened the season with a tough road game against Baylor, a series that the Bears led 9-0, outscoring Texas State 349-100 in matchup history, including a 75-0 blowout win in 1916. Baylor entered the game as 27.5-point favorites, with Heartland College Sports writing, while I normally lean towards the more conservative sides when it comes to the giant spread in Week 1, Texas State is outmatched and outclassed. A motivated Dave Aranda-led team is a scary sight for anyone, especially when you're on the road to start off the 2023 season. I think Richard Reese is going to prove to fans that he deserves to be in the All-American conversation on a weekly basis, and I believe that the Bears will get their 10th straight win in the all-time series against Texas State. The Bobcats felt differently as they went into Waco and walked out with a 42-31 upset win, got their first win against a Power 5 team in program history, and got paid by Baylor. They then traveled to play rival UTSA in the Alamo Dome, falling to them in a tough game 20-13. At home for the first time in 2023, around 24,000 fans waltzed their way into Bobcat Stadium for the ninth largest crowd in program history to witness probably the most explosive performance Bobcat fans have ever seen. They blew Jackson State out 77-34, not only covering the spread, but hitting the over by themselves. The Bobcats compiled 684 yards of offense and scored 11 touchdowns in the game. TJ Finley accounted for five of the Bobcats' scores, three through the air and two on the ground, sitting out the second half. The Bobcats nearly scored 84 points for a program record, but the late score was called back and they were one point shy of tying the record of 78 that was set back in 1920 against Meridian College. Nevada came to town next, and Texas State found themselves down 17-0 at half. While previous Bobcat teams might have put their heads down and just taken the L, this squad was different. Behind Ismail Mahdi's career-high 216 rushing yards, they came back to win 35-24 for the program's largest come-from-behind win in FBS history. The Bobcats 3-1, off to their best start in four games since the start of the 2013 season, scored touchdowns on five of its seven second-half drives to complete the comeback win. Texas State was just three games away from their first bowl game in program history, and they got even closer with a 50-36 win over Southern Miss on the road. They then traveled to Louisiana to take on the Raging Cajuns. They fell on the road to them to fall to 4-2. They found themselves down 20-15 to to Louisiana Monroe with four minutes left in the game. TJ Finley led an 11-play 76-yard drive to score the game-winning touchdown with 46 seconds left to beat Louisiana Monroe 21-20. They were just one game away from bowl eligibility with five games left. During the homecoming game, they lost a tough game to the leader of the Sun Belt West, Troy, 31-13, but last weekend they finally achieved the goal of becoming bowl eligible when they blew Georgia Southern out, 45-24. GJ and President Kelly Damphouse promised they would jump into the river when they became bowl eligible, and they followed through with their promise after the game jumping into the San Marcos River. This was the second time for them to reach six wins at the FBS level, but previously they did not get to play in a bowl game because too many teams qualified and were controversially left out. With four games remaining in the season, 
they still could make it to double-digit wins and should coast themselves into a bowl game this year. The crazy thing is, this team is still building. They currently have the 6th best recruiting class in the Sun Belt, TJ Finley is only a redshirt sophomore, and they still have multiple goals to achieve. If Kenny chooses to stay around for the long run, he could build Texas State into a dangerous group of 5 contender, especially with the recruiting pipeline of Texas and the new college football playoff setup. What do you think? Is Texas State the best story in all of college football this year? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.